Mary Custis, one of the wealthiest heiresses in Virginia, fell in love with a penniless soldier, Robert E. Lee. Although Lee came from a prominent family, at the time of his birth, there was no family fortune left. Under the terms of her father's will, Mary Lee was allowed to live in and control the family home, Arlington House, during her lifetime, at which point the house would pass to her eldest son. Mary and Robert E. Lee lived in Arlington House until 1861, when Lee went south to join the Confederate Army. Union troops moved into Virginia in May 1861, immediately taking up positions around Arlington House. The property was confiscated by the federal government when property taxes were not paid in person by Mrs. Lee. The property was offered for public sale on January the 11th, 1864 and was purchased by a tax commissioner for government use for war, military, charitable, and educational purposes. Union officers are seen here on the front porch of Arlington House. Neither Robert E. Lee nor his wife ever set foot in Arlington House again. Brigadier General Montgomery C. Meigs commander of the garrison at Arlington House and quartermaster general of the Union Army, who may have had a grudge against Robert E. Lee, was tasked with finding additional burying grounds for battle casualties. Meggs reported his grim satisfaction of ordering 26 Union dead to be buried near Mrs. Lee's Rose Garden in June 1864. Private William Henry Chrisman from Pennsylvania was the first soldier to be officially buried at Arlington. A laborer, Chrisman enlisted in the United States Army on March the 25th, 1864. He was hospitalized for measles five weeks later and died on May the 11th. He was buried on May the 13th, 1864. Montgomery Meggs's own son was killed in October 1864 and is buried at Arlington Cemetery. The funeral of John Rogers Meggs was attended by President Lincoln and other dignitaries. He was eulogized as one of the youngest and brightest of the military profession. He has fallen an early victim to murderous rebel warfare. Montgomery Meggs's own tomb is also located at Arlington National Cemetery. Meggs was buried there in 1892. The lid of his tomb was modeled after the Ark of the Covenant described in the Book of Exodus. The 175 regiments of the United States Colored Troops, the USCT, made up some 10% of the Union Army. After the Civil War, soldiers in the USCT fought in the Indian Wars in the American West. Arlington National Cemetery was segregated until 1948, and until that time, veterans of the United States Colored Troops were buried in Section 27. The first major memorial constructed was the Civil War Unknowns Monument which was meant as a tribute to Union soldiers. An inscription on the memorial reads, Beneath this stone repose the bones of 2,111 unknown soldiers gathered after the war 
from the fields of Bull Run and the route to the Rappahannock, their remains could not be identified, but their names and deaths are recorded in the archives of their country, and its grateful citizens honor them as of their noble army of martyrs. May they rest in peace. September 1866. Now, originally a Rodman gun was placed at each corner of the Unknown's monument, and a pyramid of shot adorned the center of the lid. By 1893, the memorial had been redesigned, the plain walls had been embellished, and although the inscription had been retained, the lid was replaced by one modeled after the Ark of the Covenant. Several hundred Confederate dead were buried at Arlington by the end of the war in April 1865. Some were prisoners of war who died in custody. Some were executed spies. Some, because of the inability to identify remains, were probably buried in the monument to the Union dead. In 1868, families of dead Confederates were barred from the cemetery on Decoration Day, what we now call Memorial Day. Union veterans prowled the cemetery, ensuring that Confederate graves were not honored in any way. Families of Confederates buried at Arlington were refused permission to lay flowers on their loved ones' graves. Because of the Spanish-American War, the federal government policy toward Confederate graves at Arlington changed. On December the 14th, 1898, President McKinley announced that the federal government would begin tending Confederate graves since these dead represented a tribute to American valor. On June the 4th, 1914, President Wilson dedicated the Confederate Memorial at Arlington. Several hundred Confederate dead were disinterred and reburied in a Confederate section around the spot designated for the Confederate Memorial. The Confederate Memorial was dedicated to reconciliation and the hope of a united future. One of the notables buried at Arlington is Philip H. Sheridan, who led the Cavalry Corps of the Army of the Potomac during the Civil War. In 1865, Sheridan's cavalry was instrumental in forcing the Confederate surrender at Appomattox. Sheridan later fought Indians during the Plains Wars. One of the earliest memorials to be built in the cemetery was the Sheridan Gate, built in 1879. In 1971, the cemetery expanded and the Sheridan Gate was dismantled. Major General George B. McClellan, seen here with his wife, was a controversial military officer during the early years of the war, accused of having the slows by President Lincoln, McClellan was a brilliant administrative officer, but timid on the battlefield. McClellan ran against Lincoln in the presidential election of 1864, but lost. In 1867, Congress required that all military cemeteries be fenced. A red Seneca sandstone wall was built around the entire cemetery. The original main gate of the Arlington Cemetery was dedicated to Major General George B. McClellan. The gate was completed in 1879. Joseph, Fighting Joe Wheeler served as a general in the Confederate Army in the 1860s, and later as a general in the United States Army during the Spanish-American War in 1898. 
In 1898, Wheeler commanded the cavalry division that included Teddy Roosevelt's famous Rough Riders. The bearded Wheeler is seen here with Roosevelt and others. And here we have the grave of Joseph Wheeler. One of Wheeler's former comrades in arms, Confederate General James Longstreet, said upon seeing Wheeler in a U.S. Army uniform, Joe, I hope that Almighty God takes me before he does you, for I want to be within the gates of hell to hear Jubal Early cuss you in the blue uniform. Another of the uh, notables buried at Arlington is Abner Doubleday. Doubleday was a career soldier. He fired the first shot in defense of Fort Sumter. He also played a pivotal part of the Battle of Gettysburg. But he's best remembered as the inventor of baseball. On April the 17th, 1939, the Washington Senators and the New York Yankees paid tribute to Abner Doubleday. Although the game which President Roosevelt was supposed to open was put off because of drizzling rain, both teams journeyed to Arlington National Cemetery to lay a wreath at the grave of baseball's founder. <laughs>